Oarotos Veta, Chapter 3 Veta, Story Discussion and Chapter Lesson. As always, I assume that you have read the story multiple times and know what happened so that we can discuss it in Greek. Oteo des potes poni, tis pros hori. Oteo des potes poni, tis pros hori. O Philippos pros hori. O Philippos pros hori. Tis estino Philippos. Tis estino Philippos. O Philippos estin o tu dikeopolidos ios. O Philippos estin o tu dikeopolidos ios. Are du netones tin sun lambanin? Are du netones tin sun lambanin? Ne, o Philippos estin pes megas. Ne, o Philippos estin pes megas. Pos su lambani. Pos su lambani. Feri to deep non. Feri to deep non. Ar o dikeopolis lipi to arotron ke dipni? Ar o dikeopolis lipi to arotron ke dipni? Ne. Ne. Ties din ponos to dulo. Ties din ponos to dulo. Oxantias feri to sperma ke spiri of to. Oxantias feri to sperma ke spiri of to. Ar xantias eti poni, lunatones tin ton dulon dipnin? Ar xantias eti poni, lunatones tin ton dulon dipnin? Oxantias uketi poni, ogar dikeopolis kaliaf ton dipnin. Oxantias uketi poni, ogar dikeopolis kaliaf ton dipnin. Ar esu hazusi ama? Are su hazusi ama? Ne, kathizusi ke dipnusi ama. Ne, kathizusi ke dipnusi ama. Metato dipnon, ti leo pater prostonion. Metaton dipnon, ti leo pater prostonion. Mena, ope, ke sulamvane. Mena, ope, ke sulamvane. Pos lei ton yon ponin. Pos lei ton yon ponin. Ferto sperma ke spire, fesin. Ferto sperma ke spire, fesin. Ar nunes tinti to dulo ponin? Ar nunes tinti to dulo ponin? Ne, Ponos estin megas. Ne, ponos estin megas. Ti leio dikeopolis to dulo. Ti leio dikeopolis to dulo. Skapte tus lithus ke ekfere ek tu agru, fesin. Skapte tus lithus ke ekfere ek tu agru, fesin. Ar oxantias heri? Ar oxantias keri? U. U. Ara tosotus ponus estin halapos? Ara tosutos ponus estin halapos? Ne. Ne. Pos estin halapos. Pos estin halapos. Poliugarisin ulithu, ke molis dunatones din arun. Poliugarisin ulithu, ke molis dunatones din arun. Tilei oxantias. Tilei oxantias. Al u dunatones din tosutus lithu sekferin, feisin. Al u dunatones din tosutus lithu sekferin, feisin. Ar o despotes lipi tus lithus? Ar o despotes lipi tus lithus? U, lei, me fluari oxantia, ala poni. U, lei, me fluari oxantia, ala poni. Nun, 
tinas ponusin. Nun tinas ponusin. O pater que o pes que o dulos ponusin. O pater que o pes que o dulos ponusin. Pota uketi ponusin. Pota uketi ponusin. Ota o elios cataduni. Ota o elios cataduni. Ota o elios cataduni. Pu vadizusin. Ota o elios cataduni. Pu vadizusin. Tota vadizusin proston yukon. Tota vadizusin proston yukon. Ara spevdusi proston yukon. Ara spevdusi proston ikon? U vradeos vadizusin. U vradeos vadizusin. Tiun vradeos. Tiun vradeos. O tamala kamnusin. O tamala kamnusi. Ara lamvanusi tus vus proston ikon? Ara lamvanusi tus vus pros ton yukon? U liusi tus vus ke lipusi aftus in to agro. U liusi tus vus ke lipusi aftus in to agro. The chapter material for this lesson will have five parts. Word building, grammar, uvoes, classical Greek, and New Testament Greek. Let's start with word building. Remember, this exercise is to get you comfortable taking Greek words apart and building them into larger words with prefixes and suffixes. Number one, is pipto. It has the prefix is, the root peeped, and so it means I fall into. Ek pipto. Number two, ek means out of, so I fall out of. Number three, Isago. Again, the prefix is into with ago, I lead into. Number four, prosago. Pros is to or toward, so I lead to or toward. Number five, prosvlepo. Again, pros, to or for, so I look toward. Let's move on to grammar now. We'll begin with case forms for articles, adjectives, and nouns. In chapter 2, you learn the singular forms of the masculine, neuter, articles, and adjectives, and nouns. Now we're going to add the plural forms for all cases. So here is a review of the material learned in chapter 2. O kalos agros, that is the good field and the nominative, the subject, case endings. Tu kalu agru, these are the genitive forms, u sounding longer to me. To, kalo, agro, the dative case forms, and again, singular. Two or four, the good field. Notice the yoda subscript underneath the omegas. Ton, kalon, agron. The accusative, ton, kalon, agron. Notice the, n notice the nasal sound, like in him or them. Ton, kalon, agron. And then the vocative, when you're calling out to something. Oh, kale, agre. Oh, good field, as if you were talking to it. On the neuter side of things, notice there is only a slight variation. Notice the nominative and accusative forms are slightly different than the masculine, and they are identical to each other. The nominative and accusative, and vocative for that matter, of all neuter forms are identical. So notice, to kalon zendron. That could be nominative or accusative. The vocative, o, there, is not an article. It is a marker to let us know that we're dealing with direct address. Notice, kalon zendron is the same as the nominative and accusative forms. Now let's take a look at the new plural forms of these words. The nominative, u kalu agru. The genitive, ton kalon agron. And look at the neuter, it's the same, ton kalon zendron. The dative has the iota, but it's not subscript. Tus kalus agrus. And the same with the neuter, tus kalus zendrus. The accusative plural doesn't have a nasal sound, but it does have an S, I guess similar to our plural forms in English. Tus kalus agrus. So not only is that plural, but it's also the object. 
Tuscalus agrus, the good fields. I see Tuscalus agrus, vlepo Tuscalus agrus. And the vocative is the same as the nominative, o calu agru, o good fields. Notice on the neuter side of things, the nominative, accusative, and vocatives are all identical. Kala dendra. They also all have that alpha. Ta kala dendra. The beautiful trees. All right, let's move on to the next point of grammar, accent shifting, point three. When we were discussing neuter case forms, we saw an adjective with an accent on its final syllable, cologne, and a noun with an accent on its next to last syllable, that is the penult, dendron, and we saw that there wasn't any change in accenting on dendron. However, a first or second declension word, and we're working on second declension words, accented on their final syllable, like cologne or agros, will have circumflexes in their genitive and dative cases, but acutes, or grobs, if a word follows, in the nominative, accusative, and vocative forms. That covers all the nouns that we have seen thus far with accents on their ultima, like kalos, or agros, and all words accented on their penult with an acute, like zindron. That leaves words accented at their earliest position, either an acute on their antepenult, or a circumflex on their penult. Remember that the penult is the earliest position for the circumflex. In either of these two situations, the ultima needs to be short for the accent to be placed that early. If the ultima becomes long, then the accent must shift. So let's take a look at those two situations. First, a word accented on its antepenult with an acute, and then a word accented on its penult with a circumflex. Let's take a look at the singular forms of anthropos. Notice there are only two forms with long ultimas, the genitive and the dative. When the ultima is long, the earliest position that may be accented is the penult, so the accent must slide over to the penult position for those two forms. Notice the accenting on the article is following the rule governing words accented on their final position. It has circumflexes on the genitive and dative forms, and on the accusative, it has acute or grave in this situation, and would have had a grave on the nominative form if the o wasn't a proclitic. Let's take a look at the plural forms now. The nominative plural form, u anthropu, has an ultima with a digraph. When the digraph omicron iota or alpha iota finishes a word, that is, there is no consonant following it, those two digraphs are considered short for accenting purposes. Thus, anthropu can keep its accent on its antepenult. Again, in the genitive and dative cases, we have long ultimas, on and now us. Notice the omicron iota has a consonant following it, so it is long just like any other digraph. The accent must now shift over one spot to its earliest position with a long ultima being the penult, anthropon, anthropus. The accusative has a long ultima as well, us, and so we end up with tus anthropus. The vocative, again, is identical to the nominative, anthropu. So to sum up, words accented with an acute on their antepenult will keep it with a short ultima, but if the ultima is long, it must shift over one position to the penult. Now let's take a look at a word accented on its penult with a circumflex. Remember that the penult is the earliest position for a circumflex, and a circumflex may only achieve that earliest position with a short ultima. So we have o ukos. Now if the ultima is long, circumflex cannot remain on the penult, and thus, the accent will change to an acute, to yuku. Acute is happy to remain on the penult. And so we see, if possible, an accent will remain in the same location, but just change its type rather than shifting places. Likewise, the dative, to yuko, with its long ultima. The accusative has a short ultima, so the circumflex can remain on the penult, to yukon. In fact, if the penult is long, and we have a digraph, so it is long, and we are going to accent it, it must be accented with a circumflex. 
That is the only time circumflex may appear on the penult is if the penult is long and we are going to accent that syllable. And so it must appear there. If you don't understand that principle immediately, that's okay. We'll review it a number of times and it will sink in eventually. The vocative has a short ultima, and so the circumflex can remain on the penult. You get. In the plural forms, we have the same situation as in anthropos. We have a short ultima for the nominative and vocative. The circumflex can remain as it was born. Yukyu. But in the genitive, dative, and accusative forms, we have long ultimas, so the circumflex cannot remain on the penult and it becomes an acute. Tonyukon, tusyukis, tusyukus. The dative and accusative sound similar, but remember, if you're going to mispronounce the Omicron Iota digraph, make it sound more e than u. Tonyukon, tusyukis, tusyukus, o yukyu. Now on to exercise 3 gamma. Give the correct form of the article to complete the following phrases. This should not be too difficult since the article normally looks the same as the noun ending. Notice, tus anthropus, u thulu, in tusukis, ecton agron, prosta dendra, ton atheneon, toarotron, the neuter is a little different. Toarotron, ton chronon, euponu, tus lulus. Exercise 3 delta. Complete the following sentences by giving the correct endings to the verbs and nouns, and then translate. Number 1. We can tell the correct ending for the noun in this sentence by the article. U dulu. Since it's plural, the verb also must be third person plural. Ponusin. In tus, again, the noun is going to match the article. In tus agrus. Number two, we can tell the noun ending from the article. Uanthropu. It's third person plural. Spevdusi. Proston, again, matching the article. Proston yukon. Three, ote dikeopolis ke odu. Matching the article, ke odulos. We have a compound subject here, the geopolis and the slave, so it's got to be a plural verb. Menusi, in, is always followed by the dative, and it should match the noun. In to agro. The article gets a circumflex because it is a second declension noun in the dative case, just like agro. Four. Before we can determine the verb ending, we have to find the subject. So we scan through and we find o thulu. It is plural, so the verb will be plural, but the o marks that this word is evocative, and imperatives always correspond to vocatives. Slaves do this. Since we are talking to the slaves as a second person, we will have a second person plural imperative ending. Lipete. The noun will match the article. Ta'arotra o thulu. Lipete ta arotra o dulu. Into matching into agro. Five. Again, we have a vocative o dulu. So we will have a second person plural imperative. Erete tus lithus o dulu. Ke, and we are continuing the command. Ke ekferete ekton agron. Number six, udunatonestin tus lithus. So it is not possible to do something. We need an infinitive to complete the sentence. Udunatonestin tus lithus erin ke ekferin. Now let's go on to exercise three epsilon. Translate the following pairs of sentences. These are nice exercises because we see the form of the sentence in Greek before we need to compose it. Make sure that you have done these on your own before listening to this part of the recording. Feel free to stop it right now and make sure. Number one. O men dikeopolis alavni tus vus, u de voes u keti elkusi toarotron. So we have this men de construction. On the one hand, dikeopolis alavnis di tus vus, but on the other hand, O de voes no longer elkusi drag the to arotron. 
Now for our composition, we have a similar construction. We have on the one hand, the master calls the slaves, but on the other hand, the slaves do not drive the oxen. So we're going to use the same min the construction. O min despotes, kalitus zulus. U the zulu, uk elavnusi tus vus. Number two. Me cathizete into yuko, o pedes, ala elthete devro ke su lamvanete. Here we have a negative command. I know it's a command because me is used for non indicatives. Me cathizete into, do not cathizete into yuko, o pedes, o children, but ala elthete devro cam devro ke su lamvanete. And help. For our composition, we have something similar, a negative command to the boys, and then an alternative of what they should be doing with a, another imperative. Me minute, me minute in tu sagrus, o pedes, ala vadizete, or venite prostonyukon, ke kathevdete. I'm sure they enjoy that command. Number three. Upedes is hiruisin, lithuskar megalus ferusin. Our subject, upedes, and they are is hiru. And we get the reason. Lithuskar, so for the, and those are the accusatives, so we probably don't want to start with those. For they ferusin tus lithus megalus, they carry great rocks. We're going to have a similar sentence for our composition. Plural subject, the slaves are lazy, so a to be verb with a complement. And then an explanation, for they are no longer working. Udulu agruisin, uketigar ponusin. Notice the epsilon contract verb, ponusin. The accent there on the contracted epsilon and usin ending. Number four. Lamvanete to arotra o dulu, ke spevdete pros tu sagrus. So another set of commands. Lamvanete, take the ta arotra, notice the plural, neuter plural ending, the plows, calling out to the slaves telling them to do this, and spevdete hurry prostus agrus. For our similar composition sentence, imperatives again, loosen the oxen, calling out to the plural slaves, and leave the plows in the field. Remember the word for plow is neuter, and our neuter plural nominative or accusative ending, or vocative ending for that matter, is alpha. Luite tus vus, o dhulu, Ke lipete ta arotra in to agro. And number five. Me ok nikte opedes andriu este. So a negative command, the vocative, and then a complement with a to be verb. You are brave. Don't shirk, boys. You are brave. For our similar composition, we have a negative imperative. Don't wait. Boys, plural vocative, don't be so lazy. So we have a negated imperative in the second clause here. Me minute, o pedes, me esta utos agriu. Remember the word for so is utos. The singular command to be is isti, but all plural imperatives are identical to the second person plural indicative, in this case, este. Me esta utos argi. Don't be so lazy. The word for so there is utos. And the second person plural imperative, esta. Second person plural imperatives are always the same as second person plural indicatives. Don't be confused with the singular, isti. Me esta utos argi. Now for another story, uvoes. Use this recording to practice and sharpen your reading skills. Be sure to read the story out loud and practice it until you can read it as fast as I can.
o te despotes que odulos vadizus y proston agron. O mendulos to arotron feri. O de despotes alavni tus vus. Epide to agro pros horusin, uvoes uceti venusin. O un despotes caliaftus, que me minete o voes, facing. Alas pevdete is ton agron. Ude voes eti menusin. O un despotes ton dulon cali, que el cetevro oxantia, facing, que su lamvane. Ugar voes menusin, que udun atonestin alavnin aftus is ton agron. O menun dulos pros hori, que Ala dunatonestin, facing, idu, que kenditus vus, ude uceti menusin, ala spevdusin is tonagron. After you have read through the story a number of times and understand it, work through the comprehension questions below. Number one, what are the master and slave doing? Ote despotes que odulos vadizusi proston agron. Number two, what happens when they approach the field? Epide to agro pros horusin, uvoes uceti venusin. Number three, what does the master do and with what result? O un despotes cali aftus, uze voes eti menusin. Number four, what does the master do in his helplessness? O un despotes ton dulon cali. Number five, what does the slave do that the master did not do? O dulos kendi tus vus. With what result? Ude uceti menusin, alas pevdusin is ton agron. Okay, on to one of my favorite exercises composition, translation into Greek. Exercise 3 zeta. Number one. The master hurries into the field. This one's pretty straightforward. O despotes is tonagron spevdi. Number two. He looks at or toward the field and says, So many stones are in the field, it is not possible to plow. And we're supposed to use arun for the infinitive to plow. Let's start with our verb, vlepi. He looks. Toward pros with the accusative tonagron, he looks toward the field, and now he says, since this is a direct quotation, we will use facin. Remember that facin always follows all or part of the quotation. So these stones are so many or so great. Tosutu lithu isin in the field in toagro. It is not possible, Udonatonistin, followed by an infinitive, Arun. Vlepi prosto nagron, ke tosutu, facin, lithu isin in toagro, Udonatonistin, Arun. Number three. Come here, slave, and carry stones out of the field. So we have a vocative calling out directly to the slave, and we will also have imperatives. Elsa devro, odule. Que ekfere tus lithus ek tu agru. Pretty much like the caption. Number four. But the slave says, It is not possible to carry so many stones out of the field, so you help. We have a change in subject for this sentence. The master was speaking in number three, and now the slave is our subject. So we will use the following the first word. O de dulos. So now. The slave, Udunatonestin, facing. Again, a direct quotation, so we're using facing following part of the quote. Tosutus lithus ekferin. To carry such large stones, or so great stones, so many stones, ektu agru, out of the field. Now, to emphasize the you, the subject, we will use the nominative personal pronoun. Su un, su lamvane. Altogether, then, o de dulos, udunatonestin, facin, tosutus lithus ekferinectu agru, 
Soon, Sulamvane. Now on to the classical Greek section. My favorite new comic, Menander. His comedies are much like uh, Shakespeare or maybe Seinfeld, where you have twisted plots, uh, unknown themes. Let's try this sentence out. On eu theu philusin. We have our subject, eu theu, the gods, philusin, they love, on, whom. So the one whom the gods love, apotheneski neos. We have a new clause here, apotheneski, he dies, neos, young. So altogether, he whom the gods love, he dies young. On to the New Testament. This is a quotation from Jesus. Tideme kalita, kyria, kyria, ke u puita alego. We'll take T as why here. It can be what. And why do you call me, do you call me, Lord, Lord, kyria, kyria, ke u puita, and you do not do. Ah is now another relative pronoun. We'll learn those much later. The things which, ah is the things which, just like in the last sentence, own was he whom. Ah, the things which, lago, I say. So why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do the things which I say? Congratulations, working through this lesson. Again, I assume that you've done it many times before listening to this lesson, and we'll listen to it and work through the chapter many times after. After you are completely familiar with it, please take the quizzes and exams associated with it, and I'll look forward to working with you in the next chapter.